Hey everyone, so in one of my previous videos where we looked at high ISO performance of the Z6 versus the D5 versus the DF, a lot of people asked why I didn't include the D500 um, and I just wanted to make it all kind of full frame um, in that video. So what I'm going to do in this video today, um, as the title says, is Nikon Z6 versus the cropped D500. So this should be pretty interesting. They both go to 51,000 ISO. Um, we obviously have full frame in the Z6, 24 million pixels. We also have cropped DX sensor with 21 million pixels. So it'll be interesting to see how these compare at high ISO values. So what I'd like to do is we're going to head over to my Mac and we're going to look at some of these shots. Okay, so here we have the Nikon Z6 on the left hand side. The Nikon Z6 has the 50mm prime on the front of it. And then we have the D500 on the right hand side. The D500 has a 35mm lens on it, so giving it an equivalent focal length of 52mm. We're currently looking at ISO 400. And just before we kind of go any further, I just want to double check that I mentioned to you guys that all of the Z6 files has had all the noise reduction removed. So when you put a Z6 file into Lightroom, it automatically applies noise reduction. That's all been removed. It's all been turned to zero. Matches exactly what the D500 file inputs to. So they're all on a level playing field. Okay, so here we are at 400 ISO, first of all. So let's go and take a look at one-to-one. -one. So we crop in at one-to-one -one on both the Z6 file here on the left-hand side and the D500 here on the right-hand side. There's not a lot of difference at ISO 400. There's nothing really between them. Not even anything really drastically noticeable in the out of focus areas. So if we have a look at two to one on both of these. Okay, so at two to one, we definitely start to see a bit more breakdown in the D500 file. In only in the out of focus areas though, if we compare kind of foreground areas, there's not really much noise visible. Okay, so at 400 ISO, not much difference. Okay, so here we are at 800 ISO. Again, Z6 on the left-hand side and D500 on that right-hand side. So we'll go in first at one-to-one -one and at ISO 800, it's starting to appear like the full-frame Z6 is starting to pull away. This visible grain I can see here in the out-of-focus area is not visible on the Z6 but it's only in the out of focus areas tiny bit down here but this is much more visible if we're comparing the area of sharpness then it's almost no difference if we compare it two to one we can really start to pick that grain out the d500 is definitely worse okay so let's see how far we can go so we're now at 1,600, and we'll have a look at one-to-one, -one, first of all. Okay, so at one-to-one, -one, at 1,600 again, just the stronger grain in the out-of-focus areas, but still nothing really to talk about in the in-focus areas. Let's try two-to-one. Yeah, I don't think the D500 is going to be able to claw this back. If we compare these areas here, we're definitely getting better noise performance. Which you would expect from a full frame sensor. So here we are at 3200 ISO and the D500 is still holding strong for the in focus areas. It's just showing a lot of grain in the out of focus areas, that's all. but. Detail and sharpness in the areas that are in focus is really nice and comparable to the, the Z6 currently. Um, it's literally only the depth of field areas that are lending it down. So if we just check that at 2 to 1, really start to see just the extra grain kicking in on the D500 on the right hand side. So just a bit of a jump in the ISO here, 
we've gone up to 10,000 ISO and we're at one to one 10,000 ISO Z6 on the left and D500 on the right and the D500 has just got noticeably more noise in the shot. The Z6 is cleaner as you would expect but I would say if we were looking at kind of our comparable test that we did last time I would probably say that the D500 might have better low light performance than the DF maybe. If we just take that to 2 to 1 you can really start to see here that the D500 just has a ton more noise in the shot. Okay so now we're at 20,000 ISO again zoomed in at 1 to 1 and the Z6 is cleaner as we would expect even at 1 to 1 and we go in at 2 to 1 you can see that the D500 is really starting to struggle now at 20,000 ISO. Okay, so here we are at 51,000 ISO, another big jump in ISO. And we have the Z6 on the left hand side and the D500 on the right hand side. And yeah, at 51,000 ISO, the noise level or the noise difference is clear. The D500 is really starting to struggle. A lot of grain in here when compared to the Z6. And just very quickly, just to show you. So here are both shots at 204,000 ISO. Just to show you what they're like at their high 2 ISO settings. But generally, I'd avoid using these settings at all in any case. Obviously, the D500 can go even higher and it'll end up at high 5. And that's when you hit the 1 million ISO range. Um, but as you can see here, the Z6 has generally beaten the D500 when it comes to high ISO performance. Kind of what you would expect from a full frame sensor, but it was a bit closer than I thought it was going to be. Especially between that kind of 1000 to 3000 ISO range. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful and I hope it kind of made your decision easier if you're looking between a D500 or a Z6 when it comes to high ISO.